<laughs> hey everybody, Kent Ramon here, back here in the Cruiser Bruiser. We got an awesome review for you guys, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's <laughs> Kevin Ramon, back here again in the Cruiser Bruiser. Back with you this time with... Brett. Sasha. From the Black Heart Strings, we just got out of watching Bob Marley One Love. And um, yeah, you guys, I, I kind of dug it. I want to give you guys like my little review on it. So uh, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, this is like a biopic on Bob Marley. Uh, but not only that, though, you kind of get a little bit on his band, The Wailers. Uh, Brad asked what The Wailers mean. I really don't know what The Wailers mean. So you let us know in the comment section if you know. But uh, anyways, um, it's like really, really cool. Um, I got a lot of um, insight into Bob Marley's life that I didn't even know about, like going into this movie, like about like the war going on in Jamaica, how there's like opposing political sides and Bob Marley kind of just wants to unify everyone through his music and then like while trying to do that you get people at his concerts like trying to shoot him and things like that no, people did shoot him yeah the yeah his house. there's people that attempt to do it and then people that show up to his house that like, try to kill his him his wife basically should have been dead I don't know how the hell she survived but you know she yeah been... like like really deep stuff that I didn't even know about going in I so was... basically Bob Marley was like Snoop Dogg before Snoop Dogg <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. Um, yeah, and this was like um, 1978, maybe a little bit before then. Um, one of the things that I will say about this movie, though, that um, I kind of didn't like is that it's a little um, inconsistent with the timeline. It's so like, random. Yeah, like throughout the movie, like you'll um, get like scenes of like Bob Marley recording in the studio with his band. and Which um, those are cool. Then there's like one where he's like behind the fire, which I don't know if that's like representing something or just like a random like you know talking about the yeah. fire and the guy on the horse yeah so it's his dad i don't I, yeah no i think it might be representing like um kind of like uh how what what he talks about in his songs like um well like in jamaica like the culture is like like uh fire like represents something there's something like uh metaphoric um in there but um, what I want to say is, like, uh, there's jump cuts throughout the whole movie that just, like, um, kind of, like, flashbacks. Kind of, like, flashbacks through his, like, childhood and things like that that just happen so randomly where you're kind of, like huh, like, why is this here right now, you know, it kind of just happens Some of them sporadically. Like, why is this in the movie? Yeah, 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 you know, and I'm, I mean, I like that it's there, but, like, those flashbacks could be a movie of its own, you know what I mean? Because there's, like, movie, or there's a part in the movie where, um, he's a teenager, and it's him, like, starting the band as a kid type of thing, which is really cool, and then there's parts where, like, he met his wife type of thing, like, as a kid and whatnot, like, those little flashbacks are cool, but they just happen, like, out of nowhere. It could have been placed better in the like, right yeah. time and all that. Yeah, exa exactly. I think that may be like an editing uh, issue there. But um, other than that, though, like I really like what I got out of the movie. You know, a lot of um, insight into the history of um, not only like Bob Marley, but like Jamaica as it's as a whole. Like I didn't know about that, like how like. Bob Marley not only came to America to, like, try to um, reach, like, a larger crowd with his music, but also to escape because... Oh, so it wasn't kind of to start a new life? Yeah, because of all the violence going on. What's people... weird to me is he left all his kids in Jamaica, though. Yeah, that was a little weird. I don't know. Another thing I want to say is I like the beginning, how it showed him, his real son, like, t now, today. Yes. About the movie. Yes. Thanks for reminding me, Brett. Like, uh, when we went into the movie, there's, like, a really cool intro with, like, Ziggy Marley um, kind of talking about how he was on set every day of the movie to make sure it was accurate, you know, like, an accurate portrayal of his father and uh, i think that's really cool like the whole family is like behind this movie you know so they definitely need to add some captions i couldn't understand at all what they're saying it was so hard i'm like what was this yeah. fight? like especially when they start fighting yeah like the arguments is like are they speaking spanish <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jesus. well they do have like that thick uh, jamaican accent so sometimes some like subtitles would be helpful but um, I mean, I could kind of appreciate it though, because that way you know it's oh, like yeah, it's good, but it's accurate. Don't hurt it. It's accurate. You know, that's how they talk. You know, it's not like you get some random white guy dressed up as Bob Marley type of thing. Be happy. <laughs> Anyways, um, 
So yeah, there's a lot that I liked about it. Um, I like how it showed like explain how he died. I didn't even know how he died in real life. Yeah, I never knew that. I thought I got like shot or like yeah. smoked too much weed and had cancer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well they explain it in detail in this movie, and um, I also want to mention before I forget, I really liked um when they uh, first go to America, they go into London, and the Clash is playing in a small club, and they're all jamming to some punk rock. Was, that was yeah, really that was really scene. cool, man. Wait, that was the Clash. Yeah, it was the Clash. They're singing a song called White Riot, which I used to sing in my old band, but um, that was really cool, really cool to see that <laughs> Bob Marley and the Whalers digging some punk rock. Um, anyways, guys, um. I also want to say, um, which was really cool about the movie is seeing like, um, the unity of his band, like they're out playing soccer, they're out, um, running laps together outside of band practices and yes, uh, swimming, you know, outside of their studio time and whatnot kind of reminded me of us right now. You know, here we are reviewing movies, watching movies together. You know, we miss Noah, you know, he's got kind of a busy schedule, but you know, it is what it is. So anyways, guys, um, pretty cool um what do you guys want to rate this movie from a scale of one to ten well oh one thing i also i sorry was in the end of the show like real clips of him kind of yeah. elvis and all that I was kind of rad yeah that was so rad. i give it some points i would say a solid eight out of ten because i mean it wasn't as good as elvis and all that in my opinion it was still good but it's not my yeah thing. what about you sashi i agree eight eight um I really dug it. My only problem with it is, like, the inconsistencies in the, the flashbacks. Like, I don't know. Maybe if, like, the editor would have, like, put some type of, like, um, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, uh, like kind of... time in it? Yeah, like, fade away to it or something. Or put something, like, um, in subtitle, like, in writing, saying that this happened at this year or whatever. Because it just really cuts right into it. Yeah, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, like... You would like if you didn't know any better, you would think that it's just it happened all at the same time, which Easily. it didn't. Yeah, so the timeline's all over the place. So, um, thinking of that, I I think I will agree and give it an eight out of eight out of ten. Still a really good movie, but um, yeah, it's got like little minor flaws. Definitely, it was a good movie, but it's one of those movies I'm not gonna like watch again, probably. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, one time. Thing. Yeah, if you're not like a huge like reggae fan or Bob Marley fan, it's probably like a one time watch. It was, yeah, exactly. It was good, yeah. but yeah, it's not watching them make the songs was really cool. Watching them in the studio that cool. jamming, that was pretty cool. Jamming. Anyways, you guys, um, real quick, I want to um, kind of give us a little plug here. Shout out to the Black Heartstrings. We have a new song on Spotify called Crossroads. It's on the CD. Yeah, it's on the CD. If you guys want a CD, uh, let us know in the comments section. Actually, let us know on our Instagram and Facebook, and then uh, we might be able to get one for you. If you want an autograph, let us know. So, We're... they're five bucks, yeah. but if there's no way to do it. We'll work something out. Just hit us up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're selling five dollar cds anybody that's interested it has two of our songs on it one's about to come out in like two weeks or something like that is what we're talking about axe yeah. grinder yeah yeah, yeah. so cool. yeah check this out you guys anyways let us know if you saw this movie what you thought of it give this video a thumbs up and um yeah subscribe also check on crossroads it's on apple music it's on every platform yep. check it out yep 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 all right I guys Mr. Krabs over here. I can't afford to do movie reviews because I can't afford to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So buy her music so we can afford to make more videos for you Maybe guys. Give me extra money for popcorn. You know, I'm, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> All right, Kenneth Ramon. Uh, yeah, drummer. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Bye. Black Heart Strings signing off. Yeah, bang.